Capricorn, it's me Stormy and here's your annual horoscope for 2020 in Capricorn this year. Man, the Capricorn energy is absolutely real all year long on top of having astrological events that are really critical and really key to helping some of the transitioning happening as Saturn is getting ready to be done working with you, working on you. He is leaving you this year 29 years strong with a foundation that leaves you so empowered after his movement out of your sign that this is a really big deal and this is a, a big year for you to put some things to rest. So we've got Saturn and Pluto coming together conjuncting at 22 degrees of your sign in January. Jupiter and Pluto will come together three different times throughout the year and at the end of the year your ruling planet Saturn will now be in Aquarius but coming into conjunction with Jupiter also in Aquarius as the great conjunction for the year. Not to mention we've got six eclipses happening and every planet that can is going to retrograde. So Capricorn the universe is not quite done with you yet but this year instead of just having to take the punches you get to show a little bit of what you're made of and this is where you find out how big Capricorn has become and I'm so excited for you. Okay let's jump in and talk about this. Right at the beginning of the year, on January 10th, we have got a lunar eclipse happening at 20 degrees of Cancer. So this lights up your seventh house. So coming into the year, we're still on the Cancer Capricorn axis. Lots of work happening here. Things you were seeing in 2019, you are carrying across to 2020, but you are so much better prepared to handle and navigate within them. So this lunar eclipse says that something needs to be ended. It needs to be acknowledged. There needs to be a very big adjustment over the next next six months in some of your critical conscious chosen relationships, whether this is a partnership that is romantic, a partnership that is business. I don't even care if it's with your friends or your kids or yourself. Something in your relationships over the next six months is going to take a very big shift. Now, not to mention just a couple days later on the 12th, we've got Saturn and Pluto coming together at that 22 degrees of your sign of Capricorn. So this is in your first house. So this again with Saturn and Pluto though here gives me this indicator of this first and seventh house axes that this is a death right? Saturn and Pluto come together and they create this slow evolutionary process that feels like a loss or a hardship or a turning over. But where the loss is at, you are immediately, like you're immediately given a replacement to that position, right? Like the universe does not leave a hole. So whatever you need to lose, to shed, to acknowledge, to adjust, to let go of, the universe is going to replace, but you will be the driving force in this. You are at the point here at the beginning of 2020 Capricorn where you get to choose. Are you vibrant and vital and inspired and motivated in your relationships? Are your relationships that way? The other thing I'm just getting a beautiful picture of here is that sometimes we just get older and so that naturally changes our relationships. Sometimes the relationships or people in our lives get older and this changes the relationships. You know, if you've had children, they're a little bit older. Have you had to change the dynamic and how you interact with them? Either way, something in how relationships used to be cannot exist anymore. And as an earth energy and a fellow earth energy, I'm going to tell you, Capricorn, if you've got relationship stuff, I don't care if it's from childhood or it's from last year that you're still holding on to, it is not serving you. And these are your opportunities. Use these energies. Allow the changes to come, okay? That Saturn energy is going to help you level up. Pluto helps you Phoenix out of what's there. Now, Mercury is going to retrograde three different times during the year per usual, February, June, and October. I'll be covering those in the monthly videos and then I'll also do separate Mercury videos on those as well. But what you can do is look back at my 2019 Mercury retrograde, how it affects your sign video because the retrogrades of this year are very similar to what we had before. So you can definitely look at those energies in that video, okay? March 22nd, we've got your ruling planet Saturn moving into the energy of Aquarius. This is now First of all, just a sneak peek, just a little snack, okay? Saturn is here for a visit, but it gives you your preview of what is to come, where you'll be shifting, what you'll be working on, the way that you'll be valuing things as we move towards the end of the year 
and until 2023. But Saturn coming here into the energy of Aquarius lights up your second house. And when Saturn moves into a new sign, what happens is he starts to do the work because he's here to level you up, mature you, take you to the next level. So Saturn here could be ready to take your finances to the next level, but he needs your participation. What needs to change? Where do you need to re-budget? Where do you need to invest? Where do you need to get more financial knowledge? Where do you need to put your skills and talents to work for yourself? This is in the energy of Aquarius. Maybe you got to do it different, Capricorn. Maybe you need different associations. Technology. Do you need to collaborate with an organization in some way, shape, or form? Are you not thinking far enough outside of the box with your finances? This will be a preview time for you, and you'll see it from March until July, and then Saturn's going to retrograde, and we'll see him come back in December. So use this energy. Look around Around, journal about it so you can say yeah this is what was happening for me at that time here's how my thinking was changing or here's where I felt a little bit shocked to find out information around my finances my values my possessions my self-esteem any of those things okay May 13th through June 25th we've got Venus retrograding in the energy of Gemini now this is gonna light up your sixth house space first of all when there's a Venus retrograde we highly suggest that you don't get married um, start new relationships, make big financial investments or anything like that, mostly because as Venus comes out of retrograde, it's just not as solid as you thought it was going to be. Now, Venus will be in Gemini this time, but in your sixth house, it's like, yes, I love the idea of you using the retrograde to go back over your health routines, your daily routines. Are you in love with? Are you seeing value in the daily routine that you have? Things like that. But what would not be wise is signing a brand new contract um, in some kind of work area or maybe you say this is the time that I'm going to get this personal trainer maybe you get the personal trainer on the other side of this because in Gemini you could miss details of a contract or details of a situation that are actually going to put you in a position to owe a fair amount of money afterwards so just be mindful of that but you trust the gut you trust the universe we do not stop our lives because of astrology these are just helpers so again though during this Venus retrograde if you need to look back over the value of your daily routine you need to look back over the value of your health at this venus retrograde we're going to see the sixth house starting to become important we're starting to tip the cusp to gemini and sagittarian energies which is what we will walk with going forward so you're going to get a little indicator here of maybe even you know have you been keeping yourself so busy or so work related or so wrapped up in considering what's happening with the relationship that you haven't even been taking care of your own health you've actually just missed over it in some way shape or form this will be an indicator for you to look back over all health related things work related things day-to-day -day related things and if you are a caretaker in some way shape or form you may need to relook over your finances or your paycheck in some way as well with this energy now june 5th we've got a lunar eclipse happening at 15 degrees of sagittarius this is going to be in your 12th house so see this is the vision i have that right here within this venus retrograde something you've been missing something about your health even if it's you've been keeping yourself wrapped up in your own mental wellness is shoddy because of it now the other thing is that I would look at what behaviors, beliefs, actions, and attitudes, mostly your beliefs that you've got in some kind of hidden space that are wrecking your day-to-day -day living, that are actually wrecking your health. It's like you have some old belief or some idea that needs to be torn down so that you can live more vibrantly in these other two areas for sure. Maybe it's time to do some work, have a spiritual awakening, something like that. Now, the only other thing I'll say about this particular eclipse happening here, because it's a lunar eclipse, it is time to bring something to an ending in some way shape or form now if there is a hidden enemy this could be a time where they are revealed and it could end up in some kind of legal situation or something like that what I would tell you is if that does come to your table I would take action on it before September to the best of your ability okay June 21st, we have got a solar eclipse in Cancer at zero degrees, so lighting up that seventh house over there. July 15th, we've got a lunar eclipse happening at 13 degrees of Capricorn, so in that first house. This is the last dance of the year on that Cancer-Capricorn axis as far as these moons go. So this is going to be a nice big energy for you to actually 
see what you're made of. You're going to see what you have learned over this last year and six months. These are fresh starts. These are fresh beginnings in your relationships. Maybe even relationships or beliefs around relationships you were struggling with have the opportunity to expand or to grow or they've come to some kind of maturity or healing or something like that. I do think for some people you may be welcoming children, especially because we're getting ready to have a retrograde in your fourth house, but maybe you're welcoming children or you're welcoming in a more mature version version of someone else in your life. Maybe like I said, those children have grown up and now you have a new relationship with them, something like that. So have that be a consideration. Ooh, just got information. For some of you Capricorns, it could be that someone is joining your house or your household or something like that that you did not see coming. So could this be an adoption? Are you taking care of grandchildren? Are you taking on some kind of other relationship that you didn't necessarily see coming? So keep that in mind, okay? Like I said, we've got a retrograde coming September 9th through November 13th. Mars is going to retrograde in the energy of Aries. This is going to be in the fourth house. So during a Mars retrograde, we do suggest that you not book or schedule or have any kind of elective surgical procedure. If you can get around it, it's the best thing to do so. Mars and Aries are over war and cutting and warlike things. Your surgeon, the actual cutting during your surgery would be considered warlike things and everybody's flipped around backwards. Now, if you're redoing a surgical procedure, this might actually be great for you, but scheduling something new, this is not to your benefit, but you do you, okay? Now, Mars retrograde, Mars is about your action, your desire, your energy, where you're putting your energies into. Now, the focus is going to be fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, um, women in your life, parents, things like this, you will be in the actual action of going back over things with them. Maybe reviewing something with your parents, maybe reviewing something with your children or something about your housing could even be changing. But what I would encourage you to do here as well, Capricorn, Mars is going to ask you if you're putting your energy, your attention and your action and your fight in the right place. Are you putting it someplace where you can win the battle, right? If you're having to fight with your landlord, if you're having to fight with something in your housing situation, do you need to continue the fight or is it time to take your hands off in some way, shape or form? Because Mars will also show you here, especially I think with the Pluto energy continuing to travel through your sign that you cannot force the universe to let you win every battle that you go after. Sometimes the win is taking your hands off. So in your fourth house zone, expect to be re-looking over, expect to be seeing challenges or reviews of your actions in this fourth house zone in some way, shape, or form. November 30th, we've got a lunar eclipse happening at 8 degrees of Gemini, so again, lighting up that 6th house. December 14th, we've got a solar eclipse happening at 23 degrees of Sagittarius. Again, the 12th house is lit up. But now, from that Venus retrograde that we had back in May, June time frame, you've got information to create your fresh starts to create new realities, new foundations between this sixth and this twelfth house because you will have seen them then. You've got to see what needs adjustment in order to make adjustment. You've got to see where you need new things in order to have some new things, right? So under the lunar eclipse and solar eclipse dance we've got going here, the veil is lifted and new beginnings are absolutely possible in these areas. It's fresh health, fresh perspective, new daily routines for sure in the twelfth house. Maybe Maybe something has come out of that area and I just keep seeing children and babies or something specialized, a specialized population that becomes a part of your daily routine in some way, shape or form. But certainly welcome some surprises as we get towards the end of the year and your axes will change, your focus will be changing. You've got to be spiritually fit so that you can stay as fit out in the world as is possible, okay? December 17th, Saturn is coming back for the long trek in the energy of Aquarius. So now Saturn's going to be here until 2023 working on this financial house for you. Now the good news about it is that he's bringing you to the next level. He's going to create a base for you to be successful, but he does need your help. It could feel a little bit like you're taking on a lot of responsibility, a lot of obligation, all of these things, and it can feel heavy. And as long as you don't get bogged down in the idea that Saturn is here to be mean to you, 
and instead show you a different way out put you in a position to ask for help, put you in a position to use your skills and your talents, then I think that you can really take advantage of this. On the 20th, Jupiter is also going to move into the energy of Aquarius. Now keep in mind, Jupiter has traveled all year through your sign. Your level of growth wisdom and expansion will be abundantly seen all year long and that doesn't mean that you do everything perfectly but it means you feel like you've got your tacos a little bit in a row and you can actually see it in your physical actions so jupiter has been a helper to you there he's going to be a helper to you here now and in the energy of aquarius he might be telling you take your skills take your money take how we make money and let's put it someplace digital let's put it with organizations let's expand out let's think outside of our box which is the energy of aquarius now on the 21st saturn and pluto or saturn and pluto saturn and jupiter are going to come together in a conjunction in the energy of Aquarius. Now globally this is a big deal because when they come together they're called the rulers of the age and this is important as we move towards the age of Aquarius. But right here why we care about them is these are the rulers of structure and wisdom put together. This is over politics, economics, religion, um, law and order, medicine, media, right? They are over these big dynamics that make up our social and global spheres. So this will create an energy, especially in the energy of Aquarius, where we're going to do things differently as a global union, as a global species. For sure in the United States, we've got a presidential election happening this year. We're going to see some change. Now it's usually good change, right? It's usually change that brings some, puts some healing salve on some of the chaos we've been experiencing. But for you personally, this is a turning point. This is a financial turning point where you also get to have some serenity to maybe the calamity or the worry that's been happening for you around finances, around investments. You just get to take your money and your value and your creativity in a way different direction than anything I think you were thinking of or you could acknowledge before. And it's also, I'm being shown the picture of young younger people. So at this point in the year, you might have a lot of influence of younger people or younger groupings that are coming to your life to change your finances and your self-esteem as well. The only other thing I will point out to you, Capricorn, is think back for me to 2012 to 2015. What big changes were happening for you at that time, especially financially? What was happening for you? Because you weren't ready for it. You couldn't take advantage of it yet. You just were not ready for it yet. And this is your turning point as we get to the end of the year where you can take advantage of it now. You're ready and you're ready to do all the goodness, okay? Now, three different times throughout the year, April 4th, June 30th, and November 12th, Jupiter and Pluto will come together in their conjunctions, and these are going to be your supercharge moments. So please don't forget that. I really want to emphasize that because these are your opportunities for positive growth, positive change, and it's all about you. It's all about you being empowered and moving forward and really stepping up to the plate. So don't miss those energies at all. Take advantage of them because those are your advancement energies on a super latte style kind of charge, okay? All right, you guys, I look forward to walking with you every month and every week of 2020. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you very much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.